What's going on, y'all? So, I had a personal tragedy in my life yesterday. Yesterday morning, my grandfather passed away. And, you know, this is a personal video, getting very personal with you all, but I'm not going to make this video a sad and uh, a sad and somber video. Instead, I'm going to celebrate the life of my grandfather in this video and tell y'all tell y'all about the amazing man that he was and great man that he was and the great man that me and my family know him to be. Um, well, I'm going to sum up, sum up everything that's been going on. So my grandfather had been sick for a year. He'd been in and out, he'd been in and out of hospitals uh, and rehabilitation centers trying to get better, trying to get better. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't getting, even after surgeries, he, he wasn't getting better like we wanted him to get better. And um, this past <clears throat> this past week, his health started to deteriorate vastly. And, uh, you know, we knew he was passing away and he knew he was passing away. And um, we spent time with him. We spent, we spent time with him before he passed. You know, we had been visiting him. Uh, my sister was going like every day, like every other day, you know. Um, but we had been visiting him. And, um, you know, right before he passed, we were talking about all the good times that we had in our lives and uh, everything that he's done for us. And just thinking about all the great times we had. And I'm going to tell you all some, some things about my grandfather, man. My grandfather is one of the most hardest working men I've ever met in my life. Like, no doubt. Whatever he had to do to take care of his family, he was going to get done. It didn't matter what he had to do, he was going to get done. Of course, legally, but he was going to make ends meet as best as possible, man. Um, had been working for the post office for over 20 years, well over 20 years. Uh, was an excellent musician, a drummer, can play the hell out of some drums, y'all. He loved playing the drums. He was a true mu musician. In fact, he played for former president uh, Bill Clinton. He played for him um in the late 90s so you know just tell you my grandfather was a he was a great musician and everybody in chicago illinois knows him they knew him even outside of chicago from college from his college days knew him for being a great drummer excellent drummer and was a great a man that was great with his hands when i tell y'all my grandfather can fix anything anything you could think of he could fix like he was just great with his hands always very knowledgeable um just knew a lot about everything. Great in math, great in science, uh, great in life. He, he would always, he would watch the History Channel and was just full of knowledge and would give that knowledge to me and my cousins, you know, his grandchildren. But uh, yeah, man, he could fix just about any and everything, man. And had a heart of gold. No lie, man. I remember when we were growing up, me and my sister, you know, we were the first grandchildren. And, um, you know, for a while we lived with my grandparents, you know, for a year it was because my mother was working very, very late and doing what she had to do to, you know, provide for us. And so she was working so late that, you know, we had to stay with my grandparents so that we can go to sleep in a good hour and get help with homework, so on and so forth. Uh, my grandfather would take me and my sister to the YMCA in Roseland all the time. And he would uh, he would pick us up and uh, we would be so happy. He'd take us up, get some food to eat. And uh, we would just have a great time with him, man. He would take us to the flea market on the weekend, Swapo Rama Flea Market in Alsip, Illinois. Me, him, my, me, him, and my me, him, my sister, and my grandmother all go to Swapo Rama. Every time we go, we coming out with something. He give him, he giving us some type of toy, some type of game that we want. He always taking us to go get something we want and having a good time with us, man. Um, just I'm telling y'all, man, he just loved his family, loved his family to death and was always there to support us in everything that we did. When it was my sister graduating, when it was me graduating, my cousins graduating, he was always there. You know, um, my daughter's birthday, he there, everything, man. He just, uh, he loved his family all the time. He was always so proud of us. And, um, you know, I was proud to be his grandson, no lie, because like I said, everybody, like for real, everybody knew him. Everybody knew him. And um, he was just always full of knowledge and full of life advice. Always sitting me down and um, giving me life advice. I remember it was times when I was younger, right? I'm going to share some personal times. I remember when I was like, I had training wheels on my bike and I'm just stunned with my training wheels on. I'm just riding through the neighborhood and I'm just showing out with my little training wheels on my bike. My granddad like, hold on, man. Nah, nah. You, you out here. That's time for you to learn how to ride without him. You're doing too much. 
he took my training wheels off, y'all. I was heated at my granddad. I was so heated at him. Like, come on, man. How you gonna mess up my flow? It was like during, um, uh, actually was doing like a, a barbecue that we was having. I think it was probably Labor Day barbecue because we was always barbecuing all, like every holiday he would barbecue, especially in the summertime at least. You know, we would get some barbecues going in the summer, in the summertime and all the family come over, we eat, we laugh. We joke, they be playing cards, playing hum, my grandfather and my grandma and them be playing dominoes and everything. But anyway, he took my took my training wheels off. I was heated, man. And um he was showing me how to ride. Like, man, I'm gonna show you how to ride. Keep your balance, keep your balance, keep your balance. I promise y'all, a week later, I was riding that bike and I was getting it. And I was I was so happy to tell him and let him know that I was able to ride that bike. And he was so proud of me, man. He was like, You was so mad at me, man. You was heated at me that I took him off. But and I told my grandma I trying to tell on him and trick on him so I could get him in trouble. And uh <laughs> she was put him and she was like, put him back on, put him back on. He like, he need to learn, he need to learn. And I showed learn and he was just super, super proud of me, man. Um, like even a lot of he influenced a lot of different parts of my life, uh, teaching me how to provide for your family, um, how to be an upstanding man, how to be a man of integrity, um, how to stand on your own two feet as a man. Um, that was something that I admired about him, always standing on his own two feet and um, going out to get it, going out to get it no matter what the cost, no matter what, you know, even if he wasn't feeling well some days, he'd get up and go to work because he knew he had to provide for his family, man. And he loved, he loved his wife, loved, loved all his family. And I always admired him for that, man. Um, one thing that I know, my grandfather went to um, St. Augs, it's a college. He went to uh, St. Augs in North Carolina, right? And when he was there, it's HBCU. He plays Omega Sci Fi, and I learned about you know, those. He was really my introduction to Greek life. Now I pledge uh, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, and he knew that I was gonna pledge uh, K A Psi. He would joke with me and tell me, he say, "Man, you ain't gonna be no Omega man. You gonna be a new man. I see it all on you. I see it all on you." And at the time, I didn't even know what he was talking about because all I knew was Omega because of him. He had his, he was branded on his arms and everything like that. But um, he told me he called. He said, "You gonna pledge new?" I'm like, "Man, what?" And sure enough, when I went to college, I pledged new. And he was so proud of me when I when I pledged and when I did it. And um, I remember before I started, I knew I was like, "Man, I'm gonna be tired. It's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot." Um, I'm gonna be exhausted. This is gonna be a lot. It's not gonna be easy. And he told me, man, you know what? Listen, that part of uh, and pledging and and uh, becoming part of fraternity, that's just a small. Like he said, that's that's something small compared to you know what you can deal with in in life, what life throws at you. So you can handle that. You can handle that. You are gonna be all good, man. You gonna handle you gonna handle that perfectly fine. And uh, you're going to be able to uh, take care of your responsibilities and your priorities. And you're going to be able to do uh, become a member of that fraternity and enjoy it. And he was so proud of me when I did it. Um, always at our graduations. Always like I remember when I graduated from college and he was so happy that I graduated from college. And he had a big, had a big camera. He was coming and, and, and snapping pictures of me when I when I uh, when I graduated and, um, you know, when I became. I was crowned Mr. Mississippi Valley State University. He came down to watch me. Him and my grandmother and the family came down to see me get crowned. And it was just like, he was just so, he was so happy, man. And um, I was glad to be able to make him proud. And, you know, all of us made him, all of us made him proud. And he was always talking about all of us to his coworkers, to his friends and everything, man. And um, I always, I'm always thank him for everything that he taught me, uh, you know, just growing up taught me so much about about life i remember when he was telling me you know when i was in elementary school and he saw he's like man you so lazy boy you so lazy you he'd be like boy you don't like doing nothing and i'm still lazy to this day y'all y'all just don't know i'm still lazy to this day i do what i gotta do to take care of my family um take care of my business and 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 pay these bills but I'm saying I'm still I still be lazy. But he used to tell me, he said, man, you don't want to do nothing. He said, you're going to go to school, get your degrees and um, get you a great job because you're going to have to pay people. You're going to pay people because you don't want to do nothing. You're going to pay people. And um, <laughs> when I got me a, a good job, he was so happy. He was smiling. He said, I told you, you're going to get you a good job and you're going to pay people because you don't want to do nothing. And um, I just always remember his life sayings. When stuff used to get hard for me, and I'd be looking like, man, I don't feel like doing it. I'd be ready to complain. He'd be like, man, is you going to be a man or is you going to be a mouse? 
And I'm like, man, I'm going to be a man. He's like, all right, then. We're going to be all right. We're going to be good. It's going to be okay. Don't, you know, just relax. You got it. You got the hard part taken care of already. Just take your time. Just focus. Do what you got to do. I'm here for advice whenever you need me. Call me whenever you need me. I'm one phone call away. And he was always like that, man. And um, I remember, you know, with me being a, a man now, I'm 26 years old. And he, you know, he seen me from <clears throat> a little bitty, a, a, a infant, grow from an infant to a man. And, um, you know, he was talking to me. So the life talk started getting real, real, real. Uh, and um, I just needed every ounce of everything he was giving me. I needed every ounce of everything he was giving me, telling me to stay humble, stay a good person, treat people the way you want to be treated, be respectful to people, and um, never forget where you came from, never forget where you come from. And um, that's something I'm never going to forget, and, and always be there for your family, man. Take care of the women, take care of, take care of your baby, uh, you know, take care of your woman, take care of your, your sisters, your grandmother, be there for them, man. They need that, they need that, and... Um, it's just something that always gonna go a long way with me, you know. I'm, I'm laughing because we always he's always had jokes with me all the time. Always get jokes with me all the time. And I, I remember <laughs> when I was a kid, we was uh we was living with my grandmother and my grandfather, and it was hot, hot. Chicago summers would be hot, man. That man grabbed his water hose. And was soak soak me up with the water hose, man. I was so mad at him, man. I had a plain little shirt on. I was heated. My grandma said, don't be mad. Don't be mad. Go ahead. Get him back. Get him back. Get him back. Man, he was sitting down on the bench outside. I wet him up. He was laughing so hard, laughing and running away from me. And it was so it was so fun, man. It was so funny. But um, like I said, we had a lot of great times with him, man. We, used to, we went to Wisconsin Dells when we was kids. Took us to Wisconsin Dells. Um, you know, went, went on a lot of different trips, family trips. To my grandmother, he would take my grandmother to Niagara Falls. He would take her to, he would have job trips in, in Oklahoma. He'd take her to Vegas. They did a lot of fun things. We did a lot of fun things as a family. And um, I'm always going to remember them, them great times that we always had in, um, in the life talks we had. But like I said, my granddaddy was a funny dude. A funny dude, no lie through or through. And I always laugh because I remember when um, my little sister came. And um, at that point, she was the, the baby at the point. And um, I say, man, she used to get whatever she want, whatever she want. All the time, he going to McDonald's for her. He stopping work and go get some McDonald's for her to come bring it to her. I said, oh, my God. You know, he called her Boo Boo. That was her name. And that was still, still her name to this day, you know. But, um, you know. Always, man. He always used to, uh, when he see us, he be smiling and laughing and everything. And then when I graduated from, I, when I graduated from college or grad school, and um, I, I remember when I shook his, I shook his hand, and he was like, "That's a man handshake." He said, "You a man now, boy. You a man." And uh, he say, "I say yes, sir." And he said, "No, nope, you did it." And I was like, "Man, it was a real e emotional, but." Um, I felt it because he, he was very proud. And like I said, I was proud to be his grandson. Man, he's a cool, cool guy, cool as a fan. Cool as a fan, no lie. And, um, oh, well, look, we, look, and this is the thing, too, I got to tell you this. We was, um, my, the, the childhood, the home that, you know, they were living in, uh, and they moved, though. But the home that we was growing up in, he had a studio in the lower basement area. Studio dope. My grandfather built this joint. Like I'm telling y'all, he was great with his hands. He built it. It was great. And we would go down there. We were playing, listening to music, listening to CDs, and now he'd be laying in the in a uh, in the studio with his eyes closed, sitting back, smiling, drinking him a little pop or something down there. We'd be in there listening to music, playing, and he'd be in there like, boy, y'all stay in my head all the time. But he always happy to be around us at all times, man. Um, like I said. That man was driving everywhere, driving in Mississippi to come see me, driving to Arkansas, everything, man, checking in on me all the time. And um, like I said, I'm never going to forget forget about that. I'm never going to forget about that, man. Um, you know, uh, like I said, I got my daughter now. And, you know, when I have more kids, I'm going to make sure they know and know who he is, man. Because, like I said, I I wouldn't be who I am today without him you know, helping to mold me and raise me, you know, into who I am. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to miss him. We all going to miss him. But 
I just want to show y'all some of the good times. But like I promise y'all, if anybody in Chicago can tell y'all going to Alsa, going to Swap Orama Flea Market, we used to go all the time. That's the first time I ever went was with him. And uh, we, we, we kept going. We kept going. Um, I remember we was living on 48th in Indiana. We was on the low end. And he would come in and bring us some big old thing of Harold's chicken in the crib. And we'd be in there. <laughs> we'd be in there. We smiling and we'd be like, man, the Harold's, we smell it coming through the door. The mouth sauce, he come in with the mouth sauce for us and the, and, the, and the chicken wings. And we'd be like, granddaddy hooking us up, hooking us up to the court. And when I went to um school, when I when I was in Arkansas, right, I was in grad school and he brought, he gave me some speakers to plug up, you know, for surround sound for my TV. Y'all, when I tell you these speakers was bumping bumping like these joints was getting so loud and i was like man great you hooked me up he said man i told you it's gonna be smooth i told you it's gonna be smooth are you got look you hooked it up i got you a little remote you can control it everything good and, and i promise you he know how to fix everything and make everything set up perfectly like he was mounting tvs on the wall for my grandma and him. he mounted all of that he knew how to do all of this stuff and that's, that's why i say he's a brilliant man brilliant man be a musician um, got my little, little cousin a harmonica because he liked a little harmonica and had him playing and got me a drum set. My very first and only drum set he got me. And I was be down there beating on them drums all the time, all the times of the night and everything. And he ain't care. He ain't care. Like y'all in the lower basement, I can't hit it upstairs, but I like that you doing something. You like what you're doing and supporting me in every single thing that I was doing all the time and all of us, man. All of us. He loved all of us and uh, just a loving and, and giving person. So, like I said, rest in peace to my grandfather. And uh, I just wanted to share that with y'all and let y'all know what type of person he was. Like I said, I'm going to miss some barbecues because the man can get down on the grill. Get down on some ribs, some brat, some, um, some bratwurst uh, sausages. Had to, um, He had chicken cooking on the grill. Like He, he knew how to cook. He, oh, my God. I got to say this, too. Salmon croquette, that was my grandfather's specialty, making salmon croquette for us on Saturday mornings. After school, the weekend come, he made the salmon croquette and the rice, the toast, the orange juice ready for us, man. And I was like, yo, that's why I started loving salmon, you know, uh, with the salmon croquette. And I loved how it tasted. I was a little boy eating salmon croquette. And he made the best salmon croquette I ever had in my life. Like when I, he get down on some, uh, he make some omelets, make salmon croquette. He could do everything, man. I'm telling y'all, my grandfather could do everything. All purpose, man. So, um, like I said, we I'm I'm never gonna forget him. Love him to death. Rest in peace, granddad. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.